Now we get a chance to dive more deeply into it. And as we do that, uh, just to kind of take our minds there, I want you to think of a time in your life where you had to prepare to take on a role or prepare to join a team or prepare uh, for a, a big concert or production that you were a part of, right? Uh, we all enter into those environments expecting that we're going to learn some things, right? We'll, we'll obtain some knowledge, uh, whether it might be how to play an instrument or what we're going to sing or what notes, uh, or excuse me, what uh, are going to be the, the, the part that I play, so to memorize the lines, uh, maybe it's going to be the job that I have, so I have to uh, memorize the menu so that I can be a great waiter. Uh, maybe it's so that I will learn how to use the software that they use to put in the, the orders for the people. Uh, perhaps you're going to go to the seminary, and so you're going to dive deeply into theology, and so you spend four years, well, three on the side of the seminary, but then you get to do an internship, not unlike other jobs where you're not really the guy yet or the woman yet, uh, but you're practicing, right? Usually you have a mentor, hopefully a good one, that's bringing you along and showing you some things as you go, right? We expect this season of preparation. Uh, one of the seasons of preparation that come to my mind is uh, at the hands of a man named Gene Brooks. Hey, Gene Brooks. Gene Brooks, uh, among other things, was a track coach, one of the track coaches at Concordia University in Nebraska. He actually also, uh, for a short time, I feel short, uh, worked here at the uh, University of Sioux Falls uh, with the track team there. Uh, but one, one thing that you would do before the official season started is uh, essentially you would, you would go into basically a, a boot camp scenario. Um, and you would do all kinds of uh, working out. Now, when you were new, you had no idea what was coming, right? So you'd show up each day, and he'd kind of tell you what you're going to do, and uh, you were unaware of uh, the, the mental posture of the upperclassmen who knew what was coming, right? And so one of the things that we would have to do is carry sandbags, and we'd do hills, okay? And if that wasn't uh, bad enough... Uh, you would also then uh, jog through town with the sandbags. Now, there weren't enough sandbags for everyone, so you could, you know, take turns, whatever, sometimes, uh, as the case may be. But uh, we would ultimately do extra hard things during that uh, part of our preparation. What was it for? And we kind of knew what it was for. It had a purpose. We weren't just showing up to suffer every day for no good reason, Right? Now, we were going to be setting a foundation, a base to build up throughout a whole season and try to perform our best as athletes. Uh, so that hurt, hurt so good, you might say, although it was not, it didn't feel that good, it was so, so bad, um, so much pain, but we were made better for it, and we knew that, after the first year at least, the first year you're kind of skeptical about all these things, but then year two, three, four, uh, you knew it was for your good. Uh, We'll come back to that a little bit later. In this text today, we see Jesus, and Jesus comes, he's at the waters uh, of the Jordan River, and he is baptized, and the first thing that happens is there's a declaration of identity, right? The Father speaks, this is my Son, uh, my beloved Son, with whom I am pleased. And I say this every time I ever have this text, I say this again because we need repetition. What had Jesus done yet in his ministry? Yeah, everybody say nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. No, you're supposed to say nothing. Sorry, after the second time, I, that was there. I took it. I did it. Okay, no, nothing. He's done nothing, and that was shameful. You can, you know, beat me later or something. But um, He's done nothing, but there's an identity already. You're my son, my beloved, with, you, with whom I'm well pleased. So, uh, it's a good reminder for us that this is where we start. The Lord has adopted us into His family. I love that Lord of Life family language. We, we've been adopted into the family, and we start with that identity, the beloved sons and daughters of God uh, with whom He is well pleased. It's then 
that the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Okay, so here it begs the question, does the Holy Spirit lead you into challenging circumstances? I know what you don't want to say. You don't want to have to say, well, it kind of looks like it. They did it to Jesus. (laughs) Does it happen to us? So you might have to say, it appears that the Spirit of God would intentionally lead us into challenging circumstances at times. Okay? So we have to keep reading, though. Now, we, we have other narratives that would tell us more detail about what Jesus was doing out there. It says here that he was being tempted by who? Satan. So evidently, the Spirit of God sent Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Now you're going, uh uh-oh. Could that happen to me? If you weren't asking that question, you're welcome. Now you are. Okay, could that happen to me? Evidently, the Spirit of God could lead the people of God out into a, a challenging situation that in fact could include being tempted by Satan. What happens? He's out there with the wild animals. This is a depiction of chaos, and, and the wilderness is a dangerous place. The wilderness is a place that is, in this case, barren, dry wasteland. He's with the wild animals out there, but is he alone? Everybody say no. no. I didn't say to say nothing that time. No, you got to say no. Okay, so no, he's not alone. It says in this case that the angels were attending to him. They were ministering to him. They were serving him somehow. We get no details about that. That's all we know. We don't know how. It just says that the angels were ministering to him. We have actually a term for this, a deacon or a deaconess. It comes from the same root word. To, the root of that is to serve. How? I don't know. But apparently while out in the wilderness being tempted by Satan, also there were the angels, the, the messengers of God, uh, divine beings um, ministering to him. Okay. So what is it, how does it stir in you? that God might send you out into a challenging circumstance and know that the temptation of Satan would be there. Right? If we're honest, I would guess that there's a little bit of uncertainty and discomfort that would come with that. I mean, this is where I would stand, even as your pastor. Okay, now I know there's a season coming where the Lord is sending me out and I'm going to for sure be tempted by Satan. Oof. Okay, Lord. Now, what do we know about how Jesus combated Satan from other texts? I mean, it's a one-word summary, you could say. Scriptures, right? He used Scriptures. Satan tried to as well, by the way. So, careful there. You have to be precise. Pay close attention. Okay, but, but he leaned in the Scriptures and used Scriptures to combat the lies that Satan was throwing at him. Okay, so in this battle, uh, before Satan with Satan, the temptations are coming. Satan, his primary weapon is to twist the truth just enough so that it sounds good. It sounds pretty close, so it can become convincing. We get to, as the people of God, while being attended to by God, uh, use his word to keep leaning back into the truth. And allow the truth to test and confirm, you might say. Okay? Um, trust and confirm. Test it out. Uh, is this really truth or uh, are the Scriptures more precise with this thing that I am being tempted with? All right? This is absolute spiritual warfare. All right? It's spiritual warfare. This is a, a war. We're seeing a battle go on right here. And, and here's what comes next, though. After John was arrested, Jesus came. So after these 40 days, Jesus came into Galilee, and then what was he doing? Proclaiming the gospel of God. So he's beginning his work now. And he's saying this, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is where? 
is at hand. That's now. Like the kingdom of God is here, it's saying. Some translations say the kingdom of God uh, it has come near. The, the, the uh, emphasis is that it's, it's here um, in Jesus. And so we have Jesus who has entered into this, this season of tempting, being allowed to experience the temptation of, of Satan, uh, having the support of heaven <laughs> alongside of him. Uh, but then what comes next? So what does it say to us? That this, in this case, this tempting appears to be uh, not just stand alone, not just for fun, not just to torture Jesus, but for a purpose. Uh, perhaps it's a kind of preparation for the kingdom work that is about to begin. Now, if you're going to go up against Satan, and then you're going to go up against religious leaders and uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees and the like, who do you think is going to be the harder adversary? Yes, good. Okay, let's just make that clear. Yeah, if you go first against Satan and win, anything that comes next is going to be like small potatoes. Okay. So, going back to the illustration for, for track, if you made it through that first stretch, it was the hardest stuff you were going to do. Uh, after that, your body started to believe, irrationally it seemed, that everything else wasn't so bad. Okay? Um, this happens in, in so many things. A, a, a hard push of preparation uh, that is, is pushing you to your max oftentimes is in advance of a, a more uh, sustainable pace after that where you're drawing on that or, original preparation uh, to carry you forward and to be able to, to handle uh, the expertise of whatever that skill is later. Okay. Studying an entire menu at a restaurant felt like a lot at first. But then when the orders were coming and you're able to easily you know, put in stuff and you can just draw from memory, you don't have to stare at the menu with them the whole time, you don't even have to write notes anymore, it all just felt easy. right? And I, I would venture to say that there are things like that in our life of faith. right? Why would... Everything else function this way, but then somehow our faith life be different, right? No, the Lord uh, calls us into, by the Holy Spirit, seasons where He is, is challenging us. He's allowing us to experience certain hard things. And, and I am convinced it's never just for nothing. But we can always be asking the question, okay, Lord, as You carry me through this, how are you preparing me for what's to come in the future? Now, will we know what's to come in the future? Everybody say no. No! We have no idea. So we can't conjure up like this predetermined, oh, this is happening right now because I know in 10 years I'm going to be doing this. You know, that's not the way it works. Um, but we can at least trust uh, the guidance of God and the building up that God is doing in us as people of faith. And that one day, who knows where, we don't always know, but one day, maybe, He will use that very experience, that very knowledge, that very preparation for us to do His kingdom work in the future. Okay? Some really hard things that, that I have experienced, um, God has later brought people into my sphere of influence that were going through it fresh. And I, I can't even count anymore how many times God used that to speak a word of hope into current circumstances for people. Right? Did that make the past experience any easier? No. When you're going through it, you generally don't want to really care who you're going to serve with it later. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh so much at that, I guess, but it's true. It's hard when you're going through it, um, but at least you can count on that as we experience God shaping us and challenging us in wilderness kind of places, that it's a preparation. It can be a preparation for God's future kingdom work. There's a word here that I, I, I kind of want to finish with this so that we're a people that are living forward expectantly okay, in this way. And in verse 15, 
we have words that say, the time is fulfilled. Okay? In the Greek language, there's a word used there, kairos. Everybody say kairos. Yeah, now you're speaking Greek to me. It's good. Okay, there's a different word that you can use for time, chronos. Everybody say chronos. Yeah, normally we'll say like chronology, right? Chronos is linear time. It, tick, 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 watch the clock. There's, there's your, your chronos kind of time. Kairos is different than that. Kairos is, is God entering into. There's a, a, a specific time where, where, where heaven came down and intersected into our chronos timeline for kingdom work, right? This is the word that's used here. The time is fulfilled, kairos. The, the kingdom of God is at hand, and so repent and believe. And that's simply language that says, repeatedly return to the Lord and say, Lord, um, um, find any wayward way in me, guide me so that from that life you can redirect me to the life you have for me. The space in between that repentance and the new life, that's like the preparation wilderness zone <laughs> right there, you might say, where God is sanctifying us, He's shaping us and working on us, every day making us to look more and more like Jesus, right? And so this is the journey of following Jesus that we're after, okay? Um, in the end of it all, we will fail sometimes. We will feel like we didn't do a good job. Um, sometimes when we fail, we, we start to believe the lie that we are a failure, which is not true. So then we got to come back to the beginning of this thing. My name is Billy, and I'm a child of God. You're getting there. My name is Billy, and I'm a child of God. Don't make me call you out. My name is Billy, and I'm a child of God. Y'all can hold each other accountable to it. Yeah, no, but this is the, the thing we will have to always come back to, our identity. We are not sent in the wilderness being punished, being shunned. No, no. We're sons and daughters of the one true king who has a work to do and he gives us a chance to be prepared for it, to be challenged into it, and to be carried through it uh, by his presence with us each and every day. Well, I pray that as that happens, that you'll see God so active in your life and also through your life for the others that he chooses to serve through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen.